Now I've got to apologise on the quality of the images that I'm about to show you, but these were actually sent to me by a customer because of the condition of the roof and he was asking for my help. Since then I've actually been out, had a look at the property and I've gone over all the problems with the customer. But just look how bad this is. It, it, it is incredible. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. This is a loft conversion that's just about a year old and all this moisture has accumulated in just one year. Now after watching this a few times I came to the conclusion that what the problem was is actually shown in these videos but it's quite interesting to analyse it and work out what, where and why this went wrong. So what I've done is that I've, I've made a drawing of this, in fact it's a, it's a scaled model of the construction. I'm going to flip over to that model now, take you through how this has been built then we can come back and have a look at all the evidence which is in this footage. So let's get acquainted with some of the components. We know we've got an RSJ that runs across here. We know that on top of the RSJ we've got a timber and that's the one I'm showing just across the top there. We know that we've got joists and we know that we've got these rafters that run down the front. This is where all the tiles and everything are going to go on. And if we look inside, we can see the red RSJ. We can see the timber on the top. And if we look through that, we can see loft insulation. And right at the back there, you can see the uh, felt that is under the battens. And as you can see, the loft insulation comes right up tight. It's just there at the top, and it's stopping any flow of air which is gonna come over the top. Stick our breathable felt over the top of that. Stick some battens over the top of that. And let's just have a look now at how that is starting to uh, restrict any movement that is going to go over the top. Any air that is going to be coming up here, and in a minute I'll put other sections on top of here. Any air that does get through the vent at this end here, as it gets to this point, and they've left a lovely gap for it, but what they haven't done is left an area at the other side here that is open to venting. Yes, you could say that the breathable felt's there and this area is vented. Well, it is vented in the respect that moisture can move through the breathable felt, but it's not vented in such a way that uh, you've got free movement of air. So now let's add some furrings to this. And then we're going to put the loft insulation between the joists. If we now turn around and have a look at what's going on, over the top of this now, we're going to have OSB. That's going to make a channel from this end all the way up. And we've got this open area that, if it was open on the other side, you would get a flow of air. Unfortunately, that is where they've gone wrong. They've restricted the flow of air this end. Underneath this, the insulation is level with the bottom of all the joists, which is the way that things are if you have got a cold constructed roof, which this is. The vapour barrier should be at this level. And when we go back to the drawings, we can see that not only did they put the insulation in quite tight, but they went around all the edges and sealed everything with tape. Let's, let me put the tape in just to show you what I mean. And you can see they've taped everything all the way around. This is really evident when we look at the pictures. Another thing that we're going to go back and look at the pictures and have a look at is the hole that they've left. And they've left two or three of these for the sunken lights. They've cut into the insulation. And again, we'll look at this. They've really done a lot in the way of detailing by putting the tape in and making sure that they've, they think they've made a continuous vapour barrier. But when we go back to the pictures and look at it, we're even going to see that what they did is put another vapour barrier over the top of this, or a piece of plastic which they assumed was a vapour barrier, let's put this on the model, over the top of all that. So you would conclude that with the silver foil sealed everywhere, the silver foil on the bottom of the insulation, all taped up everywhere, and a vapour barrier now I don't know what they used um, and what quality the vapor barrier was, but it's got a, the plastic that they've used must be giving some kind of vapor resistant, even if it isn't a proper vapor barrier. That you would get no movement of vapor from the bottom upwards. Let's go back and have a look at that.
Well, courtesy of the customer, this is a lovely stills picture just showing you the devastation of what's gone on here. Um, I wasn't part of taking any of this down or stripping it out, so um, this was great for me to see from the picture. But the evidence in this picture is fantastic. We can learn a lot from it. We can see that they've cut a hole in to the insulation and they've taped all the way around that and up. And we can see along all these joints that the tape seems to have been put over the top of it and they've made a really good job of trying to tape this to turn the silver part of the bottom of this insulation into a vapor barrier. Uh, that becomes really apparent and if we really look closely at this area and this area here that looks like it was all done before even the plaster went on the walls because this actually goes beyond the wall which is great because you've got con continuality there. It, 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 it's going right up to the woodwork and sealing all the edges. Um, there, here we can see the plastic was put on as well before plasterboard was put on the walls. I've got other photographs that show the plastic was continuous over the whole thing. This is the evidence that a good lot of effort was put in to make sure that there was an adequate vapour barrier on this ceiling to stop any moisture from going up into the void above. So when we look backwards towards the windows we can see that there's joists that run all the way through and sit on t the dormer uh, wall. We can see that the head of the windows here there's a gap over the top and if we look at this picture we can see the soffit board vent that is continuous across the back. So we can conclude that there was adequate ventilation at the back. If you look just here you can see there's still a piece of insulation and the insulation only ever came to the top. Now can I just say to you at this particular point that the customer has gone all the way through and cleaned everything of all the fungus that had grown inside here. So this is looking pretty clean in here now. So this sum this up good ventilation this end, no ventilation this end. So we've got no through movement of air and through movement of air is the key way of moving any kind of moisture that has come up from the room below into these voids and getting rid of it. That is the fundamental basis of how a cold roof works. Now with all the vapour barriers at the bottom there, why have we got moisture coming up one might ask and the reason being is they are vapor barriers not vapor stops a certain amount of vapor is always going to transfer through up into these voids and that's why we got it vented above here now there's another a scenario that we need to have a look at here and this is something that happened on the site survey. The minute I walked into the property and went upstairs I could feel that the whole property had a high moisture content in it and this is because this particular property is a new build property even though the loft conversion is an addition to the property the, um, <clears throat> the building itself wasn't that old so the building had been built to a very high standard and this standard includes doing a, a air pressure test to make sure there's no leakage of air anywhere. Now this is all well and good but that means that with very minimal movement of air down below the air gets saturated with moisture. As I walked into this property uh, I felt that moisture in the air. That air is all warm because of the central heating going upstairs and in the room down below even without the insulation in the ceiling I could feel the moisture up there and that moisture is just going to raise its that moisture is just going to go through the vapor barrier slowly up into the void above and if you haven't got enough ventilation above then you've got a disaster on your hands I would certainly um, try my best to not put this back as a cold roof. I would want to put this back as a warm roof because warm roof construction is definitely the way to go. Um, warm roof construction I've talked about many times um, and you, obviously you can go and look it up. It's in all my other videos but that means that the insulation is over the top and all of these voids in between here are actually uh, are deemed to be internal um, and don't need venting and therefore you don't get any sweating inside the building. Now unfortunately at this late stage, uh, late part of the game 
to do that would mean to raise the roof by at least another 150 mil and that is going to cause problems uh, at the front here at the ridge and that is a planning issue but now at this stage I would want to go back to planning and say um, look this is a situation it's already been signed off as a cold roof and finished but can we adapt it now to a warm roof and see if you can get them to do that if not they're going to have to go back to the cold roof construction um, but do it properly put a good vapor barrier underneath it and make sure that the ventilation above is second to none a uh, massive amount of ventilation across the back and across the front and that should solve the problem well hopefully this video has been helpful to you and if anybody needs any help please get in touch speak soon